Here we'll learn the larynx, which is the start of the lower respiratory tract. We address the distal portion, the tracheobronchial tree, separately. To begin, start a table to address laryngeal functions and anatomy. To note that its three key functions are, it conducts air from the pharynx to the trachea, it prevents food and liquid from entering the lower respiratory tract, it facilitates the production of speech. To note that its complex cylindrical anatomy encompasses three singular cartilages and three paired sets of cartilages as follows. The three singular cartilages are thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottis. The three paired sets of cartilages are the arytenoid cartilage, corniculate cartilage, and cuneiform cartilage. Now let's draw the larynx. Begin with a sagittal view, indicate anterior and posterior. First draw the U-shaped hyoid bone, which lies inferior to the mandible. It anchors the larynx superiorly. As we draw the larynx, we'll include the three singular cartilages first. Begin with the ring-shaped cricoid cartilage, which forms the base of the larynx. It's the laryngeal foundation. Now draw thyroid cartilage, which forms the anterior and lateral walls of the larynx. The thyroid gland lies along the anterior wall of the thyroid cartilage. Specifically label the V-shaped laryngeal prominence, also known as the Adam's apple, which forms where the lateral sides of the thyroid cartilage meet and is typically largest in males. Next show that the epiglottis attaches to the internal surface of the thyroid cartilage and projects posteriorly and superiorly over the opening of the larynx. When we swallow, the epiglottis falls over the larynx and prevents foods and liquids from entering the lower respiratory tract. Place your fingers on your neck below your jaw and swallow to feel your larynx shift forward and up. This movement causes the epiglottis to close off the larynx. This is why you can't breathe and swallow at the same time. Now that we've drawn these three singular cartilages of the larynx, let's move on to its three paired cartilages. First show that the arytenoid cartilage articulates with the cricoid cartilage. They have ladle-shaped depressions for which they are named. Arytenoid is derived from the Greek word for ladle. Then show that the corniculate cartilage articulates with the arytenoid cartilage. These small cartilages are named for their shape. Cornu means horned in Latin. Imagine tiny cornucopias. Finally, draw the cuneiform cartilage, which is enveloped within a membrane. These tiny cartilages are also named for their appearance. Cuneiform means wedge-shaped. Now let's show how ligaments and membranes hold these cartilages together and contribute to the production of sound. First indicate that the thyrohyoid membrane connects the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. Its name reflects its attachments. Then show that the cricothyroid ligament extends superiorly from the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid and arytenoid cartilages. Thus it connects the inferior and superior cartilages of the larynx. Indicate that the thickened superior edge of the cricothyroid ligament comprises the vocal ligament, which is covered by a mucosal membrane. Write that it's also known as the true vocal cord because it facilitates sound production. Next, show that the quadrangular membrane connects the lateral sides of the epiglottis to the arytenoid cartilages. Indicate that the free edges of the quadrangular membrane thicken to form the areopiglottic ligament superiorly and the vestibular ligament inferiorly. Indicate that the vestibular ligament and its mucosal covering are often referred to as the false vocal cord. It doesn't participate in sound production. In our table, denote that laryngitis is inflammation of the vocal cords, which can stem from infectious or non-infectious causes, such as overuse. It typically results in hoarseness, but severe swelling can actually block the airwaves. From the larynx, inspired air passes to the tracheobronchial tree, which we address separately. This ends our essential material. Now let's draw the larynx in superior view to better visualize the relationships between the true and false vocal cords. Indicate anterior and posterior. 
begin with the singular cartilages. First draw the cricoid cartilage, and then show that the thyroid cartilage wraps anteriorly and laterally around it. Notice the subtle V shape and the laryngeal prominence of the thyroid cartilage. Skip the epiglottis for now and show the paired cartilages from inferior to superior, the retinoid cartilages, corniculate cartilages, and the cuneiform cartilages. Here we can see that the cuneiform cartilages lie slightly anterior to the corniculate cartilages. Show that the epiglottis, the cartilaginous flap that closes off the larynx, arises from the internal aspect of the thyroid cartilage. Next show that the vocal ligaments extend from the cricoid and retinoid cartilages to the thyroid cartilage. Recall that the vocal ligaments are the free superior edges of the cricothyroid ligaments. Indicate that the opening between the vocal cords is called the rhymoglottidus. During sound production, laryngeal muscles contract to rotate the retinoid cartilages and alter the opening between the true vocal cords. Finally, show that the vestibular ligaments extend from the retinoid cartilages to the lateral edges of the epiglottis. Notice that they're lateral to the true vocal cords. Recall that the vestibular ligaments, the false vocal cords, are the inferior free edges of the quadrangular membrane. This concludes our diagram.